But with muons, you always have a problem with cross mix. So with every detector, you have to filter real events from the background. So, but there are muons in cosmic rays, right, that come from the atmosphere. So how do you distinguish a real muon from a cosmic ray muon? Yes? How fast it's going? No, they all go with speed of light. Um, but what you can do is you can use timing. So you have two handles on this. So first of all, if you produce a real muon, you know at which time the interaction took place. You know how long it takes to go from here to here, which is about six meters, right? So it's a few nanoseconds. So you can measure the absolute time of this new one. That's one. The other handle that you have is if you have a cosmic ray muon and it goes from the top to the bottom, you have the absolute time of this hit, but you also have the time difference. And if the time difference between these two hits corresponds to the speed of light, you know it was possible. Right? So D0 has um, produced a rather large, what they call a, a trigger system. And again, it's a piece of scintillator with a fiber inside connected to a photomultiplier to like that. So this is one detector. And then you have to build that into a whole detector system. So here you see all these modules with the phototube sticking up. This is one option. And then you build a whole wall of these detectors. And this is how it, in the end, looks like. Yes? No. You, you, the, the reason why, for example, these neutrino detectors are deep underground is exactly for that reason to block the muons from the cosmic rays. So you use the earth as a shield. But you have to go into a mine. Now, neutrinos. We also said that in the top part decays into a W boson, you know, decays into a lepton and a neutrino. Now, I said that neutrinos interact very weakly. So if neutrinos interact weakly, there's no way in hell we're going to detect this neutrino. So how do we do that? So there are very big differences between neutrinos in a collider experiment and in a neutrino experiment. These neutrinos in a collider experiment are highly energetic, and we only have one of them. And that one of them we will never be able to detect because they interact weakly. So how do we detect them? Yeah. Very, very careful. No. <laughs> we, have, we have only one. So if we have a top quark, you know, we have two top quarks, right? And one of them decays into W, there's only one neutrino in the event. How do we detect them? Correct. We cannot detect them. We can only infer them. Okay, and that's why these detectors are what I call shoebox detectors. You cover the interaction point completely from all sides so that nothing escapes. Then, you know that energy and momentum is conserved. So if you see that energy is missing, you say, aha, that must have been the neutrino. So they are inferred to missing energy and you associate that with the neutrino. So this is what we were after, right? Discovering a top quark, so we got two top quarks. You know, one decays into two jets, and the other one decays say, into a muon and a neutrino, so there's one neutrino. And this is what we find in our detector. So what do you see? So you see one, two, three, four jets, which is what we expect. You see the muon. It goes off. And if you look at this, you see that there's energy momentum is conserved. You see that the height of these, by the way, the height of these corresponds to the total amount of energy. So what you see is that there's more energy flowing to the left 
and to the right. So there's an energy imbalance. So the energy imbalance we associate with the neutrino. Okay, but that's how we discovered top work. Okay, there are many more things that um, you have to consider. Um, at our sister lab, you know, they're building two uh, new experiments, large purpose experiments, uh, Atlas and CMS. I will not go into that. These detectors are humongous, mm -hmm. 44 meters long, 22 meters high. I just have one picture. This is the cavern where the experiment will go. This is a truck, instead of scale. Yeah. And this whole thing will be filled with detectors. So this is, you know, a construction you can see here, uh, the people. These are uh, toroidal magnets that they're installing. But I wanted to end with a quiz. Because by now you should I think, know how, what the signature is of a particle in a detector. So here is one of these detectors that they're building at a sister laboratory. You know, here you can see silicon tracker that we discussed, like a magnetic calorimeter, a donor calorimeter, a magnet, and the muon system, and I have five particles. So I want you to tell me what the signature of these particles is. So first, pick a particle, anyone. Which particle do you want to pick? A photon. Okay. What's the signature of a photon? Okay, what's the signature of a photon? Anyone? All right, there it goes. So this is a dashed line. The dash line is because a photon is not charged. So you won't leave a track in your tracker. A photon interacts electromagnetically, so it will have leave an electromagnetic shower. Shower in the electromagnetic element. Okay, take another part of it. <laughs> not you, and anyone else. <laughs> an electron. Okay. What's the signature of an electron? Hold on. Capture the silicon tracker, let it shower. Perfect. There you go. So we need to track, bend, because it's in a magnetic field, and the curvature gives you the momentum with a uh, with a electromagnetic shower. Okay, one more. One from that side. Take one. Apart. Charge out. Uh, what's the signature of a charge atom? Anyone? That's right. So you get its charge. So it leaves a track in the tracker. And then you get a big uh, shower in the hydronic <laughs> calorimeter. Is this particle of a higher energy than the electron or lower energy than the electron? Why? Because it's no, not really because it's going for. That was not to me what I'm was looking for. Cur what's it? Curvature, right? So look at this track. It's pretty straight. Remember the car? Yeah. This is a, this is more bent. The slower the particle goes, you know, if you drive fast in the car, the more difficult it is to, to go around the corner. Oh, that's it, because we run out of time, because I want to do one more thing. Um, you have, 